Today we're making a green pom-pom wreath. Keep watching. We're going to start off with a foam wreath from Dollar Tree and then any type of green pom-poms you want and a variety of green ribbon. This part of the process will go Kind of fast kind of slow when you watch me do it it seems like it takes forever but honestly if you've got some music going and you're in a good mood and you're in good company this won't take very much time I'm gonna start off by just making a couple of little groups here I'm gonna make sections of four on my three just gonna take the biggest pom-poms that I have and you can do this any way that you would like um, you can just do all of one size, but I wanted to do a variety of sizes. And I only had three of the, um, like the tinsel type pom-poms, so I used a solid one in one section. But it's going to be covered with both, so you won't really notice it. But you just go ahead and alternate colors if you have a variety of colors and a variety of sizes. You're going to fit them in where you can get them in and make sure that you don't have any holes left over. Now the good thing about having this green foam wreath is that if there are a couple of spots where it's not filled in, it's not as noticeable as say a white wreath would be. You would see those spots, but you're not gonna see it as much here. You could possibly paint this a darker color. If you were using all of the dark green pom-poms, then you could probably just paint this a dark green color. There are some things that you can use with spray paint that I have heard of. I have a can that I have not used yet, but it's for styrofoam and it's supposed to protect the styrofoam so that it doesn't um, kind of melt or warp when you use it because I know that spray paint will do that sometimes with different types of styrofoam. So it's supposed to prevent that. You might consider something like that. Okay, so you see what I'm doing here. I am, I'm using a variety of colors, the textures, and the sizes. This is gonna give it a lot of visual interest. It's not gonna be the same thing over and over again. So it gives your eye um, lots of places to wander over and it just gives it I like visual interest. I think that because it's a pom-pom wreath, it would probably be best on an interior wall or door rather than putting out in the elements because I bet the spiders would have a blast in this wreath. So just hold your wreath up from time to time and look around for spots that need to be filled in and certainly you want to fill in on the inside and on the outer edge of the wreath so that in all directions, if it was hanging on a flat wall, it would be covered. Now, while you watch me do this, I wanna take the opportunity to thank my subscribers again. And to mention something interesting, I was looking at the data for my channel and 68% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed to my channel. So if you are not subscribed to my channel, but you do watch my videos and you want to know every time there's a new video, then be sure that you hit the little subscribe bell. When you do that, it's going to give you an option. It's going to give you the option of three different little bells. You want to click the top one that's in quotation marks. That's going to show every video. If you go underneath and click on the one that says personalized, that's only going to show you things that YouTube thinks you might want to watch. So you're going to be missing some things. So be sure that when you subscribe that you are doing that. And I will appreciate you just forever and forever. I'd really like to have a thousand subscribers, you know, by the summer. That's kind of a goal that I want. Um, kind of a soft goal and I think we can get there we have and I say we because I consider you guys my YouTube family we have 453 subscribers as of today on the 23rd of February so hopefully we can add we can double that and get on up there you know pretty soon I'd like to do some special things when I reach a thousand subscribers um, to give back to the community 
to give back to my YouTube family. So if you know anybody who would like these videos, who like to do projects on a budget, then please share these videos, any one that you like, um, or the playlist on your social media. You can put it on Pinterest, you can put it on Facebook, and you can send it in a message if you want to send it in a message. So, um, yeah, that would be great, and I would really appreciate it. Because I'm feeling in the St. Patrick's Day spirit here in this video, and I feel lucky. I feel lucky, and I feel blessed to have you all. I love the conversations that we have. I love all the kindness um, in the comment section. It's been a positive experience for me, and I hope that it is for you as well. So you can see here how I'm just kind of picking it up and just adding here and there. It doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. I'm not going for a perfect symmetrical look. I'm just filling in here and there. And then there are some spots when I go back around that look like they could use a little something extra. So don't be afraid to put two small ones side by side or, you know, stack them up, whatever you want to do there. I'm also in a minute going to show you two different ways that you can um, use this wreath. So be sure you go back and pull off any of the little spider webs that are left over from the glue. So there we go. I've got the dark one on top. And I'm going to show you how to make a simple hanger. So this is burlap. Uh, wired ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree and it came from the crafter section. You can use it by itself. You can use it layered like I've shown in other videos that I have done. Or you can make a bow with it. But to do it in a very simple way if you want to stop at this point would be to just take that ribbon, cut a section off of it, and make a simple loop up there on the top. You would just cut that off, fold it under, hot glue it, and then it's ready to hang. So that is your first option. Next choice would be to make a bow. So I'm just gonna show you here how I'm gonna do that. So I'm making a 12 inch tail. There's a black ruler at the edge of my table is what you've seen me use there. And I'm going to make some loops. So I noticed when I was using this ribbon that there is actually, and they're five inch loops, that there's actually wire that you can see on one side and you can't see it on the other one. So I'm trying to twist it in the middle like you would with a pattern ribbon. See there, I've noticed it. Now I'm twisting it and putting another five inch loop on top of that and twisting it because I want that wire to be on the inside of the loop so that you don't see it. So twisting it again and folding it over and you just do this all in my hand. You can use this to make the same bow on a bow maker if you have made one. And of course I have a video where I can show you exactly how to make a bow, make, a bow maker tool. And I will link that or it will be in the card at the end of the video. And you can make the same type of bow on the bow maker. But I challenged myself to do it without it. And I think it did pretty good. What do you think? So to hold the middle, you're going to take either a pipe cleaner or chenille stem, whichever one you want to call it. Or you can use some floral wire here. And you're just going to twist it around the middle. Next. I'm going to use this ribbon, and this ribbon, believe it or not, does have a wire in it. But it is just a, like a lime green color with a teal green polka dot. Now, somewhere between a teal and a hunter's green, because it looked really nice beside the darkest pom-pom that was on the, um, on the wreath. So I want to keep the top up there because I want to have the pattern on the outside. So you're going to twist to do that. And I cut through my mat there. Sure did. Good thing it came from Dollar Tree in a two-pack, right? Didn't hurt too much. 
All right, I'm going to stack this on top, bring my wire from behind, pull it to the front, and then just twist it. Now I've got these two held very tightly together. I was squeezing them tightly before I twisted them. And then this will give you an idea of what your bow is gonna look like. Pretty little simple bow, and it kind of reminds me of a four leaf clover, so I think it's appropriate and fitting. And we're gonna put it right up there at the top. Now, feel free to use hot glue if you want to at this point, but I want mine to stay on a little bit better without the mess. So I'm gonna use a little bit of wire. And you'll see how I do that. I've got about six inches here and I'm just going to red it through behind that pipe cleaner. Just like that, watch your fingers. You can use your little finger protectors there if you want to, so you don't poke yourself. Give it a twist, and I'm going to fix it right to the top. Pull it around the back and give it a good tight squeeze and twist. Then you're just gonna take your extras and fold them up there. And now I have a little loop hanger, just like that. Definitely at this point, go ahead and fluff that bow back out. I fluff my bows a lot. Initially, I fluff them to make sure that they are the look that I want. Then I fluff them when I put them on to make sure that I have the placement correct. And then after I've made any adjustments on the back side, of course, I have to flip it back over and fluff it out again. But I don't mind it, I enjoy this part. So, options here for your bow. You can make a loop here and then hot glue it in the center if you'd like, or you can use a pom-pom in the center. And this is what I'm gonna do. Some other options are some gold coins, any type of little, you could even use a little clover there if you had a little plastic clover or a flower or maybe some of those little um, floral picks from Dollar Tree would be good too. But I wanted to continue with the pom-pom theme, so I'm just taking another one of these little pom-poms and putting that down right in the center. I could have used a green pipe cleaner if I had one, and I wouldn't have had to do anything, but that's not how I like it. I wanted to do it like this, and I think it's cute that way. But you can do yours however you like. There's no wrong way of doing it. As long as it makes you happy, then you do it your way. So I'm just dovetailing the ends of my ribbons, and I want these, this lime green to be a little bit shorter than the um, burlap that's on the bottom. So I'm just gonna cut it a little bit shorter. And because they're wired, I can take those, put them between my fingers and then pull them down and it will flip those under. When you flip those ribbons under, they naturally will curve or hug around the edge of your little wreath there. And it just looks, it looks cute. It's a festive St. Patrick's Day pom-pom wreath. What do you think? I love it. I think it is adorable. I could play with these bows and ribbons all day long. Love wired ribbon. So thank you for tolerating my chattiness. If you're still, still here right now after all of that talk, and I really do appreciate you. I thank you so much, and I'm so glad to see that there are other people who are interested in the things that I'm interested in to the point that they support me and they watch my videos and they comment and that means a lot to me. So you guys do mean a lot to me and I appreciate it very much. I believe this is my last St. Patrick's Day project so I will be back into spring projects very soon, probably Friday. So be sure that you come back for more. Remember, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, new videos. Thank you so, so very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.